I think that's always been a good strategy. I think Bob Hayes uh, be here. Thanks, Dale. I don't know. This is not here. We have so many people. But I think uh, Tay Evans was not going to come tonight. Stay outside. I know, I'm healthy. Oh, okay. I thought you thought you were going to sit. Craziness. Like I said, we're, we're going to be here. Yes. Oh. Yes. yes, yeah, I just did that right now. So, yes, just now. Before it said, uh, whatever the last day was, it said for help from yesterday's date. Um, watch. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, you leave that on all the whole meeting? The graphic? Yes, correct. That way, if people tune in, they, they know what they're watching. Yeah, if they just turn it on in the middle of the meeting, they might not know what meeting it is. Okay. All right, so now that the microphones are unmuted, I'm just going to go out there and count to like 10 or 20, just so Luke at the studio can hear me, and you can make sure that I sound good in here. And then we're good to go. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Sounding good? Go to the, yeah, yeah. go to yeah. Go to the audience. To the table. Yeah. Live at seven. Yes, live at seven. At seven o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Sit. nine, ten. Ernie, we're good. Yeah, you're good there. Yep. You know, I can hear me talk, so it's really... Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so you can hear those now. <laughs> and then once they start, we unmute okay. them again. And, uh...
adjourn the Conservation Commission meeting of March 11, 2020. Um, we have four voting members here, two associate. Um, and you can just join us. Uh, we'll start with the uh, first hearing on the agenda. Uh, transmission line 339, transmission line right of way, North Cedar Swamp. Um, um, now I'm going to open, this is the first public hearing, I'll open the public hearing uh, for, filed by Andrew Cole, National Grid, under Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, MGL 131, Chapter 40, uh, for map 54 and 47, lots 1, 2, and 14, DEP file number 270-0729, the meeting is now open, I'll introduce the commission starting from my right. David Pinnett. Martha Moore. Anita Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn, Chair. Scott Keefe. Nicola Meserve. John Sullivan. Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. The applicant present the project. Right. I have uh, some maps here for people. I hope I have them for all. Mike, I'm going to make an announcement that zero cable is not is going to be continued because I think there's one gentleman in the audience. Yeah. If, um, just so everyone's aware, uh, on our agenda, we have a, an item, our third item, zero Haverhill. The applicants reached out to us, and, and they're going to continue. So um, when it, that agenda comes, we're not going to have a discussion on that project tonight. Uh, we're just going to have that continue. Zero Haverhill. They're not coming in tonight. Okay. Do you have any idea when? They've just told us until the next meeting. We'll, hopefully we'll have a better an, an idea at that time. So. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. All right, sorry for that. No problem. Good evening, Reading Conservation Commissions and Chairman. Uh, my name is Travis Yando from BSC Group. I'm actually will be covering for Allison, who was the original representative for uh, New England Power Company. Um, we have submitted a notice of attempt for a proposed uh, geotechnical solar blowings at uh, structure 95 uh, on the existing 339 transmission line. You'll see um, what I'm kind of referring to on page 5 of the plans. The purpose of these soil borings are necessary for engineering design and uh, planning for future work on this transmission line. The proposed work is located between Seven Orch Road in Linfield and Cable Street in North Reading. So yeah, that's why we included those other pages, just so you guys can see the access points there. Um, and like I said, will be be access from either either road. There'll be a total of two soil borings proposed at structure 95. Um, each boring will be approximately four to six inches in diameter, resulting in approximately two square feet of temporary. Um, impacts to the bordered, bordered, bordering vegetated wetland. Um, a small piece of track equipment basically will we'll go in and, and drill these holes. Um, construction matting or low ground pressure equipment will be required for accessing this location and conducting the work. Approximately 19,017 square feet of temporary construction matting is proposed and is covered under the ACO. We had kind of explained a little bit of that in the in the narrative and is a BMP approved by Mass DEP. Construction matting will be removed at the end of the project once completed. Um, some proposed best management practices to kind of go over and what we have included in our filing. Um, so the soil borings will be backfilled using existing soils that is that's um, that's stuck up or drilled out um, and we also have uh, New England Power has established BMPs uh, attached in attachment after the application just as general general best management practices including erosion and sediment controls um, installed prior to the start of work if necessary um, and as discussed historically um, used access roads will be used in temporary construction matting. Um, any mining, construction, debris, or control to be removed from the site at the end of um, the project during restoration. Um, so overall, proposed 
Uh, activities will result in minor and temporary impacts to BBW and BMPs will be utilized. Uh, MEP requests you find this proposal adequately and protective and are able to issue an order of conditions for the temporary impacts to um, BBW, media mining, and soil points. Is there any questions? What time of year are you expecting to do this? Well, this will be like early spring, late spring, early, early summer. Of this year? Yeah, of this year, yeah. <coughs> so plants will already be starting to grow by the time you're putting down the construction matting. Correct. Right. How long are the, how long is the matting going to be, how long is this project going to take? Okay, how long so is the matting going to be down? For these two, this, like this specific location, depending on their roots with in other towns, um, I'm not exactly sure, but I do know that typically these borings it takes about one boring per per day, sometimes even two. Um, so the actual work at that structure shouldn't take that long. But in terms of which direction they're going to be coming from for the rest of the work in the adjacent towns, that I'm not exactly sure of. And remind me, <clears throat> forgive me, what are, what are the dimensions of the mats? The mats, so being as inundated as this uh, this location is, um, they use a 4 by 16 wide timber matting, uh, construction matting. We have it in specs in, our, in the applications for the, uh, for the best management practices. I think it's an attachment app. Thanks. Oh, okay. So most of the area that's going to receive the timber matting, um, what what sort of you know is it is it herbaceous? Is it mixed shrub? Is it are there trees out in this area? No trees. It's kind of a scrub shrub wetland through there, and this is an area that's been historically used for other other projects within this line. Um, but to answer your question, it's shrub, shrub shrub. Okay. And the data you collect is it is it going to be? Is, is there some sort of um, plan or intent to rehabilitate these? Yeah, so structures and in the in accordance with the ACO, which is which is covered underneath with, with construction matting, we are uh, required to do quarterly inspections until vegetation is seventy five percent covered um, in that area. Um, and what what sort of protections are going to be set up um, to protect the wetlands from any sort of incidental spill or leak or any other sort of sort of mechanical glitches that come up with uh, big, powerful things like drill rigs and... Um, fabric has used in the past. Sometimes they'll lay down like fabric for secondary containment. Um, like like, felt, like, a like landscape? A fil like a filter fabric that they, it's kind of the same material that they use is like for uh, dirt bags during dewatering. So that way if any anything leaks it either absor it absorbs it or filters it out. Um, these construction mattings are also very tight um, and do a pretty good job of holding things together. And in terms of keeping things overnight, they, they usually mobilize out in and out every every each day. Because if for some drill rigs, um, you know, and I'm not I'm, uh, I'm not um, casting dispersions on the project, but I mean, even some of some established drill rigs. Every once in a while, a hydraulic line goes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's able to predict it, <clears throat> and boom, there's 50 gallons of oil. You know, and so I don't think filter fabric's going to catch that. Um, and I, I see in the BMP picture, there's a nice open space here that you know, if that, if if an oil spill, incidentally, you know, not on purpose, but if accidents do happen, you know, I I guess I'm wondering. I mean, I would like to see a little bit more protection. Maybe not 
necessarily as the truck is arriving at its location, but at least at the location it's going to operate at. Okay. And so I think that specific BMP that's uh, indicating like a bridge, so I think it's more they leave it open, but the work pad area directly adjacent around the nine, Structure 95 will be completely uh, like covered with, with construction mounting. There won't be any gaps. Um, and so do you have any... How would you feel that required by DOT specifications to carry their own spill kits anyway? So that's something that they carry on the piece of machinery. But sometimes a spill kit is absorbent. You know, it's it's kitty litter, and that's not gonna that's not gonna stop. You know, that's not gonna stop it from. It depends upon what these are. A lot of them actually carry much more significant spill kits than that, especially where they're gonna go. So. Yeah, I'm just saying if if there was, I mean, you know, even painter's plastic, or, you know, some sort of plastic poly is not a significant additional burden to the to the project. Um, which, which we have, have used in the past, especially um, on other projects, if they have to plan on using, staying overnight, we do ask for secondary containment and some kind of poly has been, uh, has been done in the past. And how many crew? It will be just one crew. Okay, so like a team of like... Team, or probably two. Two, okay. How deep are the boards? That is a good question. It depends on the engineering specs per hole. They're all different. Um, I don't have the details for this specific location. Um, I know in the past for other projects, they've been anywhere between 10 feet and probably 30 feet. Um, but specifically these locations, I'm not, I, I don't have the, the details for that. So just 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 so I sort of see the whole picture. So the matting goes out to the location where you want to drill. Does the drill rig sort of hang the auger off the side to go down? Correct. Okay. And um, or is there going to be a certain type of construction matting that has like you know a hole for the auger to go through and people can stand around it? Or I, I'm just trying to picture. So basically, they'll, they'll put matting around the area that's been staked out for the hole like pretty pretty tightly close because it is a small piece of equipment. Um, and so the edge of the, the drill rig will be on the edge of the matting, working from the matting, and then they'll be able to go down from, from up the surface of the mat. Any possibility of drilling with fluids or muds or... What's that? Do you know if you're going to be drilling with fluids or muds to keep the hole open? Did I think it's, they typically just use water and they, they, get, uh, they have a water tank. So what's the drilling technique? Is it drive and wash? Is it it's, uh, driven casing? Is it? Say that again? So, do you, I don't know if you know any more of the specifics of the drilling method. Um, I know it's not pro me. style. Um, so it's basically, um, I'm not sure specifically, to be honest. Okay. Um, I'd like to see just a little bit more detail about what drilling method, because if it is fluids, they could potentially, re I mean, they could potentially be released to the wetlands, which is an increase of sediment. You know, if, if they just drive a casing down and then drill inside of that, that's a little bit pr more protective of the wetland, but just a little bit more information. Can't you just make a? Uh, I would rather condition? have a condition. Yeah. Then, and if they feel like they can't meet that condition, they can come back. I mean, I don't think this is something that we. Uh, my personal. So what would what would that condition look like? What would that would that be? How uh, what would that look like? They can they can't drill with. Uh, drilling That's the they can't introduce they, any fluids other than potable water. Okay, and are we going to have something in there about um, turbidity and sediment disturbance? I mean, I know it is temporary. A one-day impact is not a long-term impact, but yeah. Okay. 
maybe just, you know, other contingencies, just something to think about. I mean, in this section of Cedar Swamp, is it open water? I believe it is pretty inundated. I is that one spot? There, but... Yeah, I never got a chance to walk out there with Becky last time. Um, I've always heard it was kind of marshy. It might be a depression sure that's open water. Sure you can put some sediment uh, controls in the water. And this has to be done this year. It couldn't wait till next winter. Correct. Any other questions from the commission? These the construction mats today. They're brought out, and then the the rig comes out, and then when the rig demobilizes, the mats go with it, or they stay on site, or they, is it all kind of done at the same time, or like does somebody go out and put the mats down first? It depends on how they're going to access the rest of the structures. Mm -hmm. So if they're accessing the structures from in North Reading through via this way, they may have to stay in there a bit longer. Um, that answers your questions. If if they if they decide to come off of um, the North Reading for the rest of the soil borings, the rest of these mats will take be taken out okay. as soon as they're done. Any other questions? <clears throat> Any comments from the public? Chuck, do you have uh, any items? You know, I, I, if I'm not hearing any other questions, do I hear a, a motion from the, the commission? We, we certainly, this is a notice of intent. I assume, mm -hmm. Chuck, you, you don't necessarily have yeah. anything prepared. But certainly we could close if the, the commission felt that way. I'm I'm seeing what the flavor. I mean, doesn't I, this seems like a pretty straightforward thing? Um, we certainly close next week when next meeting when the the uh, order of conditions is is ready. But uh, I'm not seeing that we're asking for short of getting conditions in there. Are we asking for any other additional information? I I'm not. I don't know about the rest of the commission. I have any more questions? I agree. Okay, so motion to close. Okay, one second. Second. All those in favor? Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Means Chuck will write up an order of conditions Correct. that includes the suggestion about potable water only. Correct. Chuck, I can help you with that language. We'll review um, it. When you need to put it together. Text like that. I can help you with that with language when you need to put it together. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to add? To I know a little bit about drilling. You can talk about it. Sometimes the clients there, sometimes they're not. To give their two cents. <coughs> about that will be the following meeting. Yes. Yeah. All right, we'll continue, uh, we'll move on to the second item uh, on the agenda. It's 259, 267 Main Street. Um, we heard from the applicant that they requested a continuance until our next hearing on March 25th. I move we continue to March 25th. Second. All those in favor? Now we were going to give a little bit of an update on that. Uh, You're right, I told, I'm the one that told you that too. Yeah, well, I got all excited and <laughs> you walked out of the room. I figured, oh, he doesn't need to be here for this. Um, so Chuck, did, you can we, give a quick update. About we did a site walk. Uh, we checked out all the flag locations. We checked out the area where the fill was going to be, uh, or was, where the wetland was going to be filled, which is up, up towards Main Street. Um, and then we went um, just around all the flag locations. Second stop was where the historic fill is that they're going to pull out and they're going to recreate some wetlands in that area. And then we walked down to the detention pond 
um, it was noticed that some of the flags are extremely conservative. Some of them by more than five feet, and um, that was noted. And then we walked over to uh, Walker's Brook and we talked about talked about the planting, and we talked about restoring the bank, and um, and hopefully those things are going to show back up as uh, as uh, mitigation for this project. So. So we'll be on the cool lookout for. Hmm? We'll be on the lookout for what they come up with. And, but just so everybody's aware, this was that site visit you did was with Ann. So it was with Ann Martin. It was with uh, Joe Peza and uh, Dave Cowell, and they're from uh, Hancock Associates. And we did that site walk. Ann's uh, our third party review. She'll be reviewing all the material. She hadn't got to it uh, as the site as the site physical was uh, taken, but um, she said that she may be able to meet us at our next uh, commission meeting on the 25th, but that may change. So that's uh, that's where it's at. So we got the site visit out of the way. Is that a site visit we could have gone on as commission members? Um, I didn't I see think, it on the agenda. Yeah, it wasn't posted. It would have been something where we set that up ahead of time. And um, I guess, yeah, I, I don't see why you couldn't have gone, uh, but it, but it just didn't it just didn't happen on this one. Okay, I, I just but wanted to make sure I hadn't missed it somehow because there was a milepost road one on the agenda, but that's the only one I saw. So, and, and just to make you aware, in the past, no one went on any of these things. So, <laughs> it's great to get a reminder, and and you know, and I don't mind contacting people, but, but no, if, no but one if, went in the but past. But if you get a quorum of attendance, don't you have to? Not for site oh. visits. Oh, that's right. Sorry. <clears throat> well, we would anyways, but uh, someone says not for site visits. That's better safe than sorry. Yeah. So we would post that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Yep. Uh, third on item on the agenda, Zero Havel Street. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the applicants asked to continue to our next meeting, March 25th. Do I hear a motion? Move to continue. Second. Second. All those in favor? Moving right along. Old new business. Order of conditions 135, 139, 149 Howard Street. So, actually, most of the, the commission has had a chance to um, review what Chuck sent over for the order. Um, did anybody get Chuck any comments or edits? I know the applicant had some that they want that they, they were uh, they had sent to Chuck. Did anybody have questions or comments? I did. I sent them to Chuck and mm -hmm. the address that we talked the other day. So. And I also Monster. sent some, but they were not substantive changes. <coughs> they were. Um, yeah, mostly editorial, especially uh, species names got um, spell corrected in interesting ways. Um, so I think they needed to be proofread. So while that was taken care of, I incorporated everyone's changes into the order. Um, and we also got some um, changes from the applicant, and I went over those with, with Mike, and um, we put most of the changes in, and uh, a couple of them we didn't put in, but uh, we just felt like it changed, changed the order too much. So um, they have a copy of it now, but they're, you know, the meeting's closed, so we're not going to ask them any questions. Uh, so we are looking at the order. This is the order. I have a couple of uh, a couple of other copies of this. If you want to look over it one more time, but we're essentially ready, ready to sign. Uh, well, it's ready to be signed. How's that? 
I would just like to take a quick look at the final what you have. Sure. Pass that up here. I'll be careful with it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can you can ask that. When for now or when everyone's ready, but I have an answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. One of the things that I, I had discussed with Chuck was, and it was about the uh, um, clean up in the spring um, after the snow, and um, depending upon how much snow we have and then how much it's plowed, some of the snow is actually going to end up going outside of the roadway right of way, and then the clean up is like on whose responsible is it? Responsibility is it at that time? Um, you know, you would assume that the the town is going to have to clean up in the roadway right of the right of way width, so to speak. But sometimes the the detritus from the snow is going to extend past that onto possibly people's lawn, etc. And then also, it's sometimes dependent upon how busy they are. You know. Um, I know that the, the street sweeping sometimes gets done at the end of June, sweeping up the, the sand, you know, in the streets around my neighborhood. So that was one of the questions I had as I was reading through the, the Board of Conditions. Um, you know, is it going to be a push? So unfortunately, Dave, they, they can't answer. <laughs> yeah. So, um... But, but I can try, and Mike can try if you want. Go ahead if you felt like you have an answer. So there's an operation and maintenance plan, yeah. and that calls out street sweeping and all that. And um, the where the town road right away is, I mean, I'm assuming that the town would take care of that as part of the operation and maintenance plan. I mean, snow is, it's going to be hard to push that beyond... Um, the right of way because I think originally we looked at that area that I have on the on the board right now and thought it was basically the width of a sidewalk, but as we got into it, we found out that that was 15 feet wide, and so most of the snow would probably be in that area. And there's there's many different ways the town. If I ask three people in the town, I'm going to find out three different ways how to plow out a cul-de-sac, but. Um, I think 15 feet is going to, going to save us, and most of the stuff is going to be on that edge. And if it if it gets any closer, we'll probably discover that prior to the end of this project and the uh, certificate of compliance. So at least a comment can be made about that. And we are going to review uh, the operation and maintenance plans also. I guess I just got for the new lots, I got updated op or operation maintenance plans, which I'll be reviewing. So it's something that was thought about. I mean, you can't cover everything. We don't know if the town's going to do this, and we don't know if the homeowners are going to, you know, fall in love with that section of their lawn. Mm -hmm. But hopefully they do. Two things mm -hmm. on page 15. Um, the two scientific names that I didn't manage to correct in the original document I sent you, the honeysuckle and the bittersweet, I think those still haven't been corrected. Um, it took me a while to find the right field guide to make sure those were correct. I think the honeysuckle needs an R tucked in the scientific name and I think orbiculate is supposed to be something else some different ending um, so and then um, page 25 G I don't have a clue what a level spreader is can anybody fill me in on what we're talking about when we're inspecting the level spreaders and the drainage swales Dave anybody where the drainage pipe comes out 
It comes out in the pipe and then it basically comes out onto like a splash, concrete splash oh, okay. plate. Yeah. And oftentimes it has uh, riprap in that splash plate so that it doesn't erode past that. Okay. That's I've seen that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Thanks. Sure. Any other items? Comments? No, am I hearing uh, anything? Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. So this one you, Thank you. you got? You can actually say, woo, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for your time. Uh, if you haven't already, you since you guys are the only ones time. here today, if you could sign in. Yeah. When they're signing it now. So should somebody wait? Oh. It I'll either send it out or someone can come by tomorrow and pick it out after after let's say ten thirty. Um why would I let you sign and I know you have to get a copy of the DEP. Um, and I'm very touchy about this because there's a whole legal case that happened with Boyd because the town didn't send the order to DEP. So I'm going to have a human being come and pick up the actual original signed order and confirm that you have sent the same thing to DEP. Is that okay? All right. Thank you so very much. No problem. Okay. Yeah, have a good night. Uh, this is to be signed by the members. Uh, uh, yeah, any, any one of those slides, yeah. Voting only. Don't forget to send a truck. While we're finishing off some signing, just go on to the, the next item on the old new business. Uh, amended order of conditions 364 Lowen Street. My understanding is they wanted a little bit more time. Sure. No, I'm sorry. Okay. We're, we're sorry. We're done with that. 364 Lowen Street is uh, we closed at the last meeting and I wrote the amended order of conditions. No, I think it was just here from uh, earlier. Yeah. Okay. And we're ready to issue. Sign and issue. Is this letter the amended order of conditions we're talking about, or just related to it? No, it's a letter. It's a variance request. Yeah. So they need to request. Uh, at the last meeting, we requested that they actually they make an official request for the <coughs> file and uh, they also address their fees. <laughs> Did this one get around to us, Chuck? I just didn't see. Did it get a what? Did this one get around to us? No. No. This it's is, just an amendment. It's so. an amendment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not much to it. It's the few documents that we received, uh, and then just a description of the work, description of how they came in. I don't know if everyone even knows that they wanted a 10 by 12 upper deck that was uh, that you would come off the first floor, and then a patio underneath that in the back. Uh, underneath that in the back of this building where the back of the building is completely well, into the 25 foot uh, zone. They didn't come in tonight. Oh, it was continued until next meeting. Okay. You guys have a good night. So it went completely in the 25 foot uh, zone of natural vegetation. Uh, that area was supposed to be part of mitigation for the two car garage and um, so Essentially, in the order, we we denied that. 
And then the applicant came back with a new plan, an updated plan that just had an egress to the basement, four steps, and a three and a half by nine and a half, or a little less than nine and a half foot um, kind of patio area, 16 plants, uh, native vegetation, and a fence. And then that's part of the mitigation. I also have in there that um, the back area will be left undeveloped again unless they come back to the commission. So that's the mitigation package that we got for this change, which uh, when we're on site visit, I think a basement door to to a basement, you know, to bring in utilities is. is I mean, I feel like the uh, homeowner and the contractor probably just forgot about that with all, everything that was talked about because it seems impossible to have a house without some sort of access to the basement. That's what I have. I don't, you can ask some more questions or... I've been eyeballing that lot as I drive up and down um, Lowell Street now, and it does look like somebody's dumped a lot of fall leaves in a big heap down the slope toward the stream in the back. Is that something that was part of the original order of conditions to clean that up? Yes. Okay. If it's not, so 364 Lowell Street is the house we're talking about. It's in back of that house. Yeah. Um, so it's not off the plymouth. It's like right here. If you're driving down Lowell Street, you can look to your left and see the house we're talking about. And you can see this embankment coming down steeply toward mm -hmm. the stream. And there's sort of a um, flow of leaves coming down the hill um, about where the 38.7 foot mark is there on the map. So I'll it's, go and check that out tomorrow and see. But but I'll, I can just let Steve know if there's something wrong. So it looks like someone brought in leaves and dumped them there. I would say like raked the yard and poured them down the slope. Okay. You know, it, it doesn't look like it was a dump truck full. It looks like it was a trash barrel. Yes. You know, it's, it's not a lot of leaves, but it's just like, oh, yeah, look at that. That's the house we went on the tour of, and that's all supposed to be native vegetation, and it's got a pile of fall leaves. You would be absolutely amazed where that stuff come from. That could be someone across Lowell Street and three houses up that put those leaves there. Like on that Longwood Ave <coughs> that we were doing. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean it came from 364 Lowell. Understood. You know. But check and check it out. And I mean, it's part of the order still open. So yep. if there's something we feel like they need to be doing, to Yeah, there should be signs up there. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, the uh, conservation it, signs soon. How was the uh, not weed on that, the not weed remediation? How's that looking? It was good last year. It's probably so they they hit it a couple of years in a row, and it was good at the end of last year. There's going to be more to do. Because there always is. Um, I don't know what to expect. It's been a it's been a while. It's been a warm winter. Mm. So, um, but they did a lot of hand pulling. So they they weren't using any uh, they weren't using anything uh, any machinery to pull it up. They, and they actually took out four feet of fill, which the not they thought the fill that they brought in had the seed in it. And so they took that away and then underneath there was there was more seed, so there was more knotweed growing. It was it was really crazy. So they didn't want to dig up any more because they had already planted some stuff and they didn't expect it to come up. So they just went in there with a team of people and uh, just started pulling it and that worked pretty well. Is this on this same subdivision we're talking about? It is on that same subdivision. Is that the on the cul-de-sac? Yeah, Lyle Estates. Mm -hmm. It was part of the uh, original mitigation. order of conditions. Yeah, the original mitigation for okay. the original variance was to do that work. I talked to one of the <coughs> vendors at the meeting on February 29th whose company does not weed mitigation, not weed removal. Um, and he was explaining how if you have a little chunk of not weed, it can root and sprout, you know. So when you have a lawnmower going along the 
side of the road, it will propagate the knotweed all the way down, as on Oakland Road. No, Birch Meadow Drive. Both sides of Birch Meadow Drive is probably because of mowing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I hear a motion on the amended order of conditions. Motion issue. Amended order. order of conditions for 364 Lowell Street, Map 26, Plot 157, Jamison Properties, LLC. All those in favor. Twenty-six Mile Post Road. That's still gonna be out there. Were you able to do us? We weren't able to set one up. Um, giving it away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this away anyways, but Carl is actually moving to a new job. So I couldn't get some time with him. And um, But we're going to try to do something on Monday. Uh, Monday at 364 Lowell Street and Wednesday at 26 Mile Post. But I'll... I'll um, these are two site visits that are coming up. Mile post. We talked about it at the last meeting. If you want to I've be involved, I've been to both of those properties. Okay, now. and I'll so I'll send you an, an email because the time isn't absolute yet. And the one at Mile um, Three Sixty Four Lowell Street, we're going to place and pick species of thirty trees. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> it should be. Say that again. You're going to determine where to put the trees and pick the species of each tree. Mm -hmm. And the same thing. And on milepost, you're planning to figure out what species to have them put more in, in the milepost. We're just going to go in there and try to figure out what everybody wants and and try to get to some sort of conclusion with uh, something closer what was submitted yeah. in the plan. Yeah. So some sort of a row of natural vegetation across the top of the slope. Everything's up in the air. We're going to determine what they can do, what we can live with, and where that trampoline goes. And Maybe there's a row up there, but there's nothing definite at this moment. Okay. I wouldn't mind being there for that if I'm available when you schedule it. All our decisions come back to the commission to vote on. So that's fine. Okay. Right. The agenda. Moving on to discussion items. Administrator's report. The dumping signs. Chuck, do you have an update on that? Yeah, I do. Uh, I got a number back on the dumping signs for the aluminum signs for the reflective letter lettering. Um, Forty-five dollars each. And I wanted to ask the commission if they still want ten or or more or less. <laughs> Is it a flat forty-five dollars, no matter how many we order? I think if we don't, I think it would be more if we um, get below a certain number. I'm not sure if that's under ten. Is there a minimum order? No. No. I would say minimum at this point to get us ten. You want ten? Yeah. I think we have some money for it. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was going the other direction with that. Yeah, but. we have ten. Do we have ten spots to put them? I mean, this spot needs two, yeah. so we have eight <clears throat> left. Pineville definitely needs two. We are on Pineville. Um, yeah, Pine uh, Pineville Conservation Area. Oh, well, there's the, uh, yeah, Maple Street or Pineville. Maple Street Ave. and Pineville Ave. Did we put a sign up there also? Like Center Ave, right? Is Center Ave, yeah, there? Center yeah. Maple. Yeah, so Center. Exactly. Center Ave is the spot where we had the issue a few years ago, right? Right. Yeah, there's, there's some fill out there. Didn't we yeah. put a <coughs> already? That's where the... the That's where the DPW was doing it for. Yeah. So I think there's a sign up yeah. there, but there was a sign. There's like a paper, no dumping piece of paper inside that built, you know, little... Oh, um, in the kiosk. Kiosk, That's, yeah. That's yeah. The kid did that for the... Yeah. Scope project. Doesn't reference a fine or anything else like that, like right. these signs would. There's a stream crossing on Sanborn Lane, which people have in the past dumped their 
beer cans and such over the railing into the wetland um, and might not hurt to have a no dumping sign there. About two other street ends. I mean, it's a wish list, but Hensey, the end of Hensey Street and the end of Criterion, they're off of um, Grove. Are they in a wetland area? Or within yeah, they, those, the streets end right in conservation land. And there's, there's a trail off Hensey that goes over to Birch Meadow Drive. In, in behind Camp you know, where, Yeah, but there's a lot of, like on Hensey, I remember one particular visit where the resident was telling me, everybody drags everything down the street and dumps it. So the end of Hensey, end, end of Criterion Street. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if we got, you know, 50, we'd go through it fast. <laughs> well, where's the money I think we could find places yeah, for it. Do we have? So, the problem is most people don't realize. What a question to ask. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Someone tells them it's not okay. So, so does you know? the sign say no yard, no, no yard waste, no... I know, but no dumping is, yeah. you know, they might be thinking, well, my beer bottles. Yeah. 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 So. What's the sign going to say? What does the sign does it say? say? No dumping, or does it say, you know, no trash, no debris, no yard waste, no. <laughs> no leaves. Right now it says no dumping, but per the order of the Conservation Commission, and then we're going to give reference the uh, regulations that, you know, talk about fining and whatnot. Yeah. But we haven't got to that point. Yeah. Wanted to know how much. Then we're going to get uh, a sign, kind of mock up, and then you guys can see that, and then you can get all over that. Um, so we were asking a question about yeah. where does the money come from, and I forgot the other. Half. How much do we have? And how much do we have? Thanks. Uh, so the the kind of money comes from the. Um, conservation state fee fund and it's uh, all permits come in with with two fees one fee is from the state this is tiny little 64 64 dollars or 67.50 or 112 or some sort of um, some sort of portion of the entire fee based on the categories that are in that fee um, category chart so it takes a long time to build up but we have about $8,000 to $10,000 in there. So I don't have the exact number, but I can, you can rest assured that there's, a, there's more than four fifty in there. Um, but I just, I do want to make sure, because we can always get another sign. It's not, it's going to take as long as it takes. And if we had four spots, then we should get four or five signs, maybe have an extra one. We don't have to get 10 if we have four spots. So that that makes the most sense to me. Um, and using these funds, the commission hasn't used them so much in the past. We've done some things, but we haven't used them so much in the past, but this is an appropriate um, use of the funds. So on the far edge of the map, lower right, is that the Longwood? No, you've just gone off the map. Well. Oops. Yeah, Those this, are Hensey and Criterion. There you go. Yeah. And, and then one needs to be at the end here. And there's a path there. Yeah. It's one. There's a path that goes from there over to um, the Bridge Middle School. How much dumping is there? Well, last time we were there. <laughs> Can you see it on the map? <laughs> I can't. I can't see dumping, but I don't see a path either. But it's just that we had two projects down here, and I drove down the end a few times. I never saw a path. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I do know. I, I walked through there. Uh, 
really often, and it's uh, you know I, I don't know the exact location of all the paths in that area, but it's all relatively you know walkable. Mm -hmm. There's even a Boy Scout type bridge over that stream someplace. Last time I saw that bridge, it was in sad shape. I don't know if it was. I don't, I don't know if I was out there just to see it before it got rehabbed because of a Boy Scout project. But well, I haven't been there in several years. But yeah, I just I remember going from Birch Meadow Drive up to Camp Rice Moody, and you crossed over the stream on one of those little. Wooden Eagle the, the Scout Project in, Bridges. This, at least, yeah, I've only lived in Reading since uh, 2018, and the bridge, there's a couple of bridges out there, and one of the larger bridges, I can think of two. One is relatively small, the other is, I'd say, 10 to 15 feet, and it's in pretty good shape. And then there's a stream just south, just south of the high school which I think is that the place people were dumping. Yeah, right there. Is that the place we're putting the bridge? Yeah, long, not the bridge, the signs. That's the original Long View Road, right? Right here. On Fellow. Yeah. Yeah. It's just fascinating to see this little stream that has no end on either end. Does it go underground at the other far end? It starts here in this trench, and then if you go up on the map, it yeah, just so it ends stops. It ends in a wetland. It's probably in a culvert somewhere through this, through down yeah, and through the Birch Meadow yeah, complex. The that's, the, that's the playground. That's the playground. It's probably yeah. culverted. Okay. But a lot this, of that ball field back there is wet. I'm sorry, Chuck. And this is groundwater. In this area here, where see, that uh, original the other complaint the came in, yeah, the water comes back up, and it pulls yeah. up in this area, and goes down through the stream. And that and that place is a mess. You would have thought it was the DPW dump yard. There's so much stuff out there. I went by and looked. It had a Christmas tree and a piece of fence material, and it's unbelievable. Yeah. So we have. Kenzie and Longfellow and Pinevale. And I was suggesting one on Sanborn. I can show you where if you zoom up there. So I'm hearing like six-ish locations. <coughs> yeah, right in that area. Uh, there where the stream crosses. Mm -hmm. South of the stream. Yeah. is where people had been doing a lot of dumping and I cleaned out a pickup truck worth with a bunch of kids one day and then the guy next door has now got himself a pair of waders and goes in and pulls out the beer cans. Um, There's a big bridge there, isn't there? Yeah. It's a big wall. Yeah, it's a big steep wall and apparently it's a fun thing to go up to the woods and then throw your beer cans on your way out over that railing. So the areas that are going to go on, the, like a bridge or on town property, I have to get permission for. Okay. So. So that would be more complicated than the other ones where they're on the conservation property. Yeah, Pinevale wouldn't be a problem, and um, if if the one at the end of Henzie is uh, not a problem, I would check into each one of these. So, Chuck, just to sort of just to sort of get if we're going to do this, and we have the money, and you know, it be it's a lot easier to just sort of buy some additional. Um, or maybe pause and ask GIS to do a query where streets go right up to the edge of wetlands or conservation area. And just besides the things we've mentioned, I mean, I'm concerned that we're missing some, some spots. I mean, I think we're talking about some of the ones that have definitely come to our attention, but 
I'm sure there's more out there. So yeah, I, I think we're better off focusing our money on areas we know are have problems, though. I think we don't know about other areas because it just hasn't come to our attention. <laughs> yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot more out there. Um, yeah, I, I would hesitate to stop this to try to figure out every place that a stream crosses a road, and then go to those locations to see if it's a good fit for a sign. Yeah, no, I I'm think not, we'd be months out before we actually get any sign up. I'm not talking about streams crossing roads. I'm just talking about places like Henzie, where streets go right up to conservation land. I mean, there's got to be sort of a simple GIS query you could do that, you know, all the conservation land, just turn that layer on, and then turn on the streets and just see which streets end at conservation land. And if we end up with 100? Or then we know. I mean, then we can make a knowledgeable, then then maybe, you know, certain <coughs> neighborhoods are protected. You know, they're more vigilant neighborhoods where, you know, this behavior is monitored by the residents and it's discouraged. But, you know, if we're going to do it, I just, I'd rather, I'd rather us take our effort and, and have it last. That's all. If, you, if there's only five places where streets come up right Right into a wetland that we don't need 20 signs. I think there's not going to be losing by me. But if there's 100 places, then maybe we should give them 10 signs. At, at this point, like, I'm not saying that we should, I, I don't think we should go anywhere more than 10 signs to start. I think it's, that's a start. Let's get those up. If somebody sees those and says, well, that's great, I have another area that really could use a sign, we, we know the process very well of how to get more. Um, I don't think we want to make this a bigger project of because we'll never get the smaller step done i think let's let's check this off of areas that we know and then if we want to look at additional places then we don't, can always get more signs so it sounds like we have need for at least six signs right now yeah so i think 10 <clears throat> is a good number that gives us four that you can store someplace and then if they come up we can vote add another one there. And so I think four, four spares is not too many spares. So can I make a motion? <clears throat> Just quickly, how, how else, uh, and what other ways is this money spent? Is this for the consultants as well? The No. Well, it could be used for the consultants if uh, the applicants don't pay the consultants. It's to promote um, uh, and educate and protect the wetlands. Okay. So that that kind of issues. Just out of curiosity, what are some examples that you know, sort of programs or uh, other reasons you've dipped into these funds in the past? Yeah, we've, we've given some money to uh, boy and girl scout projects. Okay. Yep. Um, bought a portion of a bench. I can't remember if it was the bench itself or the foundation for the bench. Um, and I think we've bought signs in the past and it pays for the MACC conference for people that uh, are reimbursed and that goes through me. Every, no matter where you drop it off, it comes back to me <laughs> before it can actually go anywhere else. <laughs> so that conference I just went to, you can I be can reimbursed, get reimbursed if you have a, yeah, if you have a, uh, can I just forward you the email they sent me confirming my payment? Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so those are the... Okay. Yeah. And so those are the, as Chuck mentioned, those are the state funds. The, the rest of the fees that we collect, so when we were referencing a lot of the fees last meeting, those are going to the general fund. So those are not you know, conservation money that that is money right. that goes into the general fund. So we can't get greedy and charge bigger and bigger fees. Huh? Exactly. No, that goes into the town fund. <laughs> so that's just so we can all. get more signs. <laughs> I, I think it needs to be said that um, I, you know I believe since, since I've been here um, and, and maybe even before that we just can't start putting up signs. If you if you know something on conservation land one where we just started talking about it and it needs it I went to talk to the DPW department they thought it was a great idea 
I'll have to get the signs. But if this turns into a campaign of putting signs up, someone, some group is asking, going to have to form, find out where you want the signs, and go and talk to the select board. And then when they approve it, then we can buy the signs and put them up. And I'm also not sure how much of this money or if I would be checked on using this money for more and more and more and more signs. Yeah. And personally, if this was my town, I wouldn't want signs all over the place anyways. So that would bother me. That's a good point, Jim Trump. So should we go back to just the two for Longwood Place, a long view? Uh, no, no, I think no, no I think we, I think we. This probably this size town is probably enough for ten. Yeah. But let's make sure that they really make sense. Like the long view really makes sense. I've been to Pineville a couple of times. I know that Stork Pile is there. Um, that seems like a good spot on one side. I'm not sure of any other sides that I. I've seen big piles of stuff going in there. I know at the Pine Vale Conservation Area, the entrance on Pine Vale Ave, I think it's Pine Vale Ave. I know one of the neighbors a little bit, him and his brother, they kind of watch the entrance. And um, it's, it's usually pretty clean, overgrown. They refuse to do any like trimming work, but no one's dumping stuff there. And when they do, it's usually up at the front where the parking area is. So, and then he gives me a call and we can get somebody to pick that stuff up. Is there, is there... a chair and a, like a couch cushion out in the middle of it? This it's point, been but... there, hasn't it? It's been there for a while. It's been like torn apart by animals and scattered at this point. Um, is there ever a problem at the entrance to Stroud Ave with somebody who thought they were going to go to the compost area and it's closed and they just dump it right at the entrance? I think the DPW would clean that up right away. And that first half is owned by the water department. So, so we, we couldn't, couldn't put a sign there without their permission anyway. Yeah, I don't think they would. They'd want more signs out there. But that, I mean, I think that could be taken care of. The DPW is always down there, always working. If someone was dumped there, they would, they would have to pick it up. OK. 10? So we're ready for um, a motion and a vote. I move we buy 10 signs. Second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Um, bills. We have a $19.71 bill, water and sewer bill. Water and sewer bill, yeah. It's for. Pearl Street, right? It's for Pearl Street, yeah. So, we still uh, haven't what, put that on Hayes' what, what, bill? What's that? We still haven't put that on Hayes' bill? No. Uh, I actually don't even understand why we get this bill. And so, we, for those every new, time comes up, we new members, yeah, this is, this right is a very yeah. common thing that, that comes up of, like, why are we paying a water sewer and sewer bill? Um, you pay based on the curb cut. Curb cut. Uh, and we have a curb cut at Pearl Street. At the entrance to the uh, Pyramidum? Yeah, Pyramidum. Did we also oh. get one for Matera? I was going to say for Kirchian, too. Don't bring it up. All right, no. <laughs> I know. Oh, you know, it, it's, it, not only is it unusual that we're getting this bill, but it's unusual we have to pay for it with that small amount of money that we get from the state. Yeah. When we are, when we have so much, you know, bylaw side. I mean, we wrote the fees into the bylaw. It wasn't the town didn't tell us how much fees they were looking for. They had nothing to do with it. Um, it would be nice to use some of that money or that 20 bucks. What is it? 1971. <laughs> I'm yeah. It's quarterly. That's another half of the sign. Yeah. So not only are we getting charged for something, we can't use the, the the bigger account to pay for. So we, we went through this before. Yeah, I, this, is, we this, really is, this is, I mean, so this we pay this lot. quarterly. I think every time there's a new new members on the commission, it's always like, why the hell are we paying this? <laughs> Excuse my language. There's no water supply 
that's that, not, that parking area. That's not how it's they do it. Storm drainage yeah. to the street. Storm drainage. Uh -huh. Contribution to the street. Well, maybe we could bring it up to um, our liaisons. I think that would be good to revisit it. Yeah, I'm not able to uh, directly contact them. That's when we talk about liaisons. It's it's the commission has to take that on their own and actually come up with these ideas by themselves. Will our so there's a changeover in the select board. So mm -hmm. it doesn't change our liaison though. Well, one of them we was John two. Halsey. One was John Halsey. Oh. So Ann, Ann and John. So Ann should still be at. Generally, what happens. And I think I was at the last select board meeting when they, you know, when I was there, but I think I stuck around to see what it was going to be. But when they get new, you know, uh, board members, they reassign them. Oh, right. And then you have to, everybody has to do a little right. draft um, of who's going to be involved. So it may be changing. I guess it's just something that they Probably is. Uh, but, it yeah, out. and Landry is one, is the one from before. Yep, so we can still reach out to her. And is that the only curb cut we pay water bills on? Yes. yes. That's very odd. We've been paying it as long as I've been on the commission. And um, Matera Cabin is a little off the map there. But so Matera is in our care, but do we... I think the facilities department takes care of all the bills over there. Yeah. Because that was turned over operationally to the... Uh, yeah. facilities. Maybe we can turn over our parking lot. I know, yeah. Well, because there's a trash can there, isn't there? I thought there was, at the, at the kiosk, I thought there was a trash can too. Yeah, so I asked yeah. for trash cans to be put. They yeah. weren't trash trans in the past and, and dog walkers were, you know, showing their frustration. <laughs> Their bags of they're throwing it at Bob's house. Well, they are in at Matera too, so it's good that there's a trash can there. That That's happened good. when, yeah. But what I'm saying is, you know, it gets it gets supported by facilities by facilities. Management of the trash there gets supported by facilities. Just to pick up our trash. I don't know that that means they'll uh, start paying our twenty dollar bills. It's worth right. asking. I think I think it's a question for our liaison. Do I hear a motion for this bill? Make a motion to pay the water bill for uh, the curb cut for. Is it one sixty four Pearl Street? Yeah. Pearl, Street. Yeah. Pearl Street. I'll second. All those in favor? All right. Minutes for approval. Did minutes go out? I didn't get a copy. I didn't get any. And I didn't get them yet. I, I would have sent that right out if you didn't get the minutes. And what about um, Charles Street Cemetery? Charles Street Cemetery. <coughs> you want me to grab those? I stay late. So at eight fifteen at night. <laughs> you want me to? Did you so email me? I emailed pictures? you so seven get photos. The, get the photos, photos, and we can ask them how the MACC conference was. <laughs> It's a little fast. Do you want to talk about the conference? How was the conference? It was good. good. I, I'm glad I went. Apparently, there's a certificate you can get if you take all these fundamentals courses. I didn't understand what the point of having to sign in and what documentation, but apparently you get a certificate if you've taken enough courses. Um, and yesterday, Tay... Well, that's right. Anika and I went to um, Linfield to course number 208, and of course I had already done course number 208 at Holy Cross, so <laughs> I should have picked something else at Holy Cross if I'd realized it was the same thing twice. Was it the same teacher too? Yes, it was okay. the exact same people. And do you have your book? It's yeah, all about a, this buffer finally. zone guidebook. Really happy to say. I mean. Um, you know, I've, I've gone to a number of these conferences, and a couple times I look at the selections of workshops, and I think I I am not interested, or I know enough about that, or I, you know. Um, but they're keeping. But this time, when I looked at the when I looked at what was being offered, um, 
I selected a couple things that I thought I needed a little brushing up on. And then when I got there, I instantly changed because it was aligning with a lot of other stuff I've been getting involved in, including MVP um, and climate resiliency and all that sort of stuff. So I took a couple of workshops on addressing climate change. I did uh, addressing climate change threats, related threats to species and ecosystems. And I took a workshop on nature's value in changing climate, land for resiliency. Um, and then I took some workshops on alternatives analysis in, in the riverfront area, which was really helpful to me because a couple times, um, especially when river alternatives analyses come up, it's just one of those parts of the regs that I'm particularly weak in. And then I took a workshop about the stormwater, the MS4 permit. So, but I, yeah, so I picked up this and I thought, finally, thank you, finally. Um, so this is basically a summary of the science you can use to justify additional protections in the buffer zone and how you would write those protections into an order of conditions. And one of the, I'm gonna to try to say it clearly, but I'm still trying to figure it out in my head. So the Wetlands Protection Act requires that we protect the eight interests of the act. So it's uh, protection of groundwater supply and private water supply and it's- um, Flooding. Thanks. There's a whole bunch of listed interests of the act. And although the buffer zone is not targeted, is not a interest of the act, the quality of that buffer zone to protect the interests of the act, if we can make that connection, then it's justifiable and it'll stand up in court. So it's kind of a secondary effect. Um, yeah, that's your last line of defense before it actually goes directly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just I'll just share from the buffer zone manual. This is a, a chart showing what <coughs> literature, what scientists are saying, are the recommended buffers distances to protect specific species. And it's impossible for Redding. And on the back side of that is the slope adjustment. So the steeper the slope, the more horizontal buffer zone you need. So our 25 foot no touch zone is fine for flat. And flat is like 8%, 8 yeah. to 11%. But if you're going if up steeper, to a steeper slope, you're going to want a multiplication factor. Right. Right. 1.4, so, 1.7, something like that. So this is a really, really handy resource. I've been, I've been reading it and getting a lot out of it. Um, and the, you know, the best thing about it is, you know, it gives you the scientific research conclusions to justify protections. And, um, and one thing they said at the workshop yesterday was the onus is on the, the applicant to make their case that they are not um, impairing or adversely affecting an interest of the act. So if something is vague, you know, we don't have to sit there and we can say to the applicant, prove to us you don't have a special habitat there. You know, not, I'm not just saying endangered species, but prove to us, you know, that you're going to be protective of this habitat or that habitat. So, and prove you're not going to increase the flood runoff in a heavy rain. In a heavy rain, right. And so. that's the kind of thing I think that all of those underground water storage at Howard Street is trying to do. Um, so that's the kind of thing. It's up to them to tell us how they're going to do it. We don't have to tell them. We don't have to come up with how to do it. They have to prove to us that it's not going to cause a problem. 
they also had a place you could buy things besides buying that guide. I bought a copy of the Wetlands Protection Act regulations, figuring now I can look it up if I need to know what we're talking about. But it's um, not looking like really easy reading. Um, and so then I'll, I'll show so, you my markup. So yeah. Chuck and I go. This one looked a little more fun. This was um, That's delineating funny. bordering vegetated wetlands and um, has some more information about how to tell where the edges are, I guess. I haven't read it yet. Um, but those looked useful um, resources. Um, I got a free metal drinking straw with a brush to clean it out. And uh, this is the company that was talking about how to do the uh, Japanese knotweed remediation and how you shouldn't have your DPW drive along with their lawn mowers along a strip of Japanese knotweed because it just spreads it and all gets caught up underneath the housing and gets deposited further along and you just get these swaths of Japanese knotweed because of the lawnmower. And a lot of these trainings are available on webinars um, and if you go to MACCweb.org events. You can see when the webinars are, and there's a list of them here. Um, and the ones coming up out in about erosion, effective effective erosion control, they're free. Right. You're free. You just got to take your Saturday and drive out yeah. to Athol. Right. That doesn't sound free to me. <laughs> well, I gather the webinar is also free yeah. online. Yeah. You got a point about that? But there was a lot of talk about climate change resiliency. Um, I mean, I saw a chart that said, you know, by 2080, there are going to be no zero degree days in Massachusetts. No frozen days. So we are warming. 30, 32, 32 degrees or, or colder. Fahrenheit. Yeah, by 2080. So habit species are moving and plantings and things we can do to protect shading of water bodies is going to be super helpful in keeping the diversity, keeping, the, keeping a, not just a diversity of species and, you know, shrub tree herbaceous, cover, but also a diversity in age. Some young plants, some of the young plants actually take in and sequester from the environment more carbon than the older tree, than the older vegetation. So, you know, there's all these dynamics happening that are, that we could play a role in helping to buffer really our environment and the species from coming transitions. I also went to a workshop on reading site plans and they recommended two tools. Highlighters and the special ruler that has a scale on it that scales like one foot, one inch equals 10 feet or one equals one inch equals 30 feet or one inch equals 40 feet. Um, and I went home and my husband had one in the drawer. So now I have my official ruler. Um, so those, those they recommended for being able to tell whether they actually drew the 25 foot buffer line accurately. Good. So just uh, to help you out with that a little bit even more, some of our, uh, some of our plans are not to scale that the commission gets. Only the full size and people have not always asked for full-size plans so we got into this habit of getting two full-size copies and everyone else gets a 11 by 17. If you want a full-size plan just let me know. Now that we're bringing it up I would love to not get the full-size plan. I, would, I think I, I think I've been getting I think the, I have a choice. I think I've been getting the Becky treatment lately yeah. 
I don't have a choice. I need to get the full size. So let him have the full size, but I'm well, going to opt out of the full size. How do you review the, the projects? Do you... On 11 by 17s. Everything. So you're okay with that? You don't do that? Yeah. Is some, like, of, the, is the, some the, of the detail on the plan hard to see, though? The, the, no, I, I don't have an issue. So the world, to me, works on 11 by 17 or on my computer, and that's just that. Even all my engineering plans are made at D size, which is 22 by 34. But you can. That's the normal size. and As long as you can see it electronically. But send it right, down, though, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as long as you can zoom into certain areas. And so do you want me to start yeah. asking for D size? That's what they're sending. That's what the, those big yeah. plans are. Yeah. I don't want that. Just might as well ask now. Um, do you want to let me know what kind of plans you want? So this is the size plan that we need to get in order to use our ruler, right? Scott, right. that's the yeah. scale. Right. Yeah. right. Hmm. Anika. <laughs> Anika. 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 Well, here. What would you like for plans? <laughs> I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna waste paper if they send me all their D size sets, and and if they sent me an initial version, and then they send me a revised version. <laughs> And with all the details attached and everything like that. So, I mean, honestly, I would like a D. I'll take a D size, can I say, of the site plan and then the proposed. I can't, right? No, it's the no, whole set. We, we got to ask. So, I like that we have a full size that, that goes in that's in our record. So, I'll give Mike's full size to you. Yeah. Or do you not want, would you prefer the 11 by 17? I'll say yes for now, and hopefully, we won't get crazy amounts of. We will. I will, but... Martha? Um, I think for now, I would like a big size. The, 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 the one like this, so I can really see what's going on. And I can ask later if, if it seems to be overwhelming. Sure. Like, like follow-up Do you want to give up your big size plan, go back to 11 by 17? Because yeah. I want a full yeah. size... Martha can have the other one. I don't have to change anything. Yeah, that's good. That work? Yep. And I can and always You're good you with 11 by 17? Yeah. The only All thing right. is the one set up, sometimes we get 11 by 17 and the, and the detail is is pretty indistinct. So it's kind of difficult sometimes in 11 by 17. Like when we get the 11 by 17 of, of uh, um, the Smith Oil, mm -hmm. um, that was... Right. So it's very difficult to read. So do you, do within you, our regulations, we do have a requirement of a maximum scale size. If we feel like plans are not, even at the large scale, are not legible, yeah. um, we can hold them to that scale size and they need to produce more. Yeah. The benefit of one drawing is yeah. that the whole story is just right. sitting on a single page. You don't have to say match lines or anything. But uh, yes, uh, I mean, the, the idea is if, if you get to too big of a scale, it, it, anything will be difficult. Sometimes it's a way it's photocopied as well. Sometimes the photocopy is just not, it's not done well. So when everything is, before you even get it, everything's on the website. Yeah. So if you go to the Conservation Division page and you board and distribution's next week, like I'll be putting something on there tomorrow. Um, I mean, does that work? I mean, that would seem to work for me. I mean, if I could give it, so, I so to me, if I'm really struggling with something, so Dave, I don't know if that would help you time. out. Yeah, it would. So everything's going on the website yeah. now. So we have current projects and past projects. Past projects will be limitedly used, but and I've only used it in the past when um, a site's up for sale and everyone keeps asking me for the plans, and I'll just I'll put it up there, and they anybody in town or any developer can go and check it out, and I call and they call or come in. And that's what I say to them when I don't have to print anything. So it works out for past projects. Current projects are, um, you know, are up there probably a day or two after I get them in the office. So, but I, I'll make yeah, those works. changes full size for me and Martha, and uh, everyone else is getting 11 by 17. Anything else at the MACC conference? I used to work there all the time. I was I was part of the MACC crowd. I always thought that we got chipped. 
because we worked all the time. We never got any of that graft. And I felt like those guys that go down and they set up the soil stuff and they set up all that stuff down in that, that room and people walk around and get, I don't know, bags and things and free stuff. I always thought they should put a package together for us that were oh, at absolutely. MACC. So we had our stuff. Absolutely. You guys got to know that. They never... Everybody take a turn and go so down there and no. go grab your swag. You know, I was only there for a couple of years and... And everyone else had been there like 10 or 15 years. I think they got everything they needed several times over. So it really didn't appeal to them, <laughs> my idea. But it's still. You know, I entered the raffle. They had a, that you were raffled off a kayak. So I entered that. Yeah. yeah. Usually a good kayak, too. Yeah, and good speaking kayak. of uh, being a winner, Anika, your soil or erosion control booklet came in today. I can... I forgot to bring it up, but it's in the office. It's this one? Yeah. It says... This one. There's an additional copy. I ran into somebody at the conference, and he was the guy who generates those um, vernal pool yellow clipboards that they hand out. Okay. With every pack to every applicant, every person, applicant, every person who shows up for the conference gets the, one of these big clipboards to... Anyway, I was sitting near him at, at lunch, and, and um, we got to talking, and, and, he, and I said, that's a really, like, I, I said, that's a really great book about the buffer zone. He goes, I have a ton of them. He said, give me your address. I'll send it to you. So I put my name at Town Hall. And MACC should have already sent you one. They did. Okay, so I'm just... And I was going to tell you exactly, when, when Anika tried to get me on that, I was going to say the same thing. Yes, whenever it came out, which I don't know, two years ago, we scanned it and put it on the website. It's been up there for two years. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot... And, I you know, mean, MACC should have done that, too. I mean, instead of creating all these books, they just sent us a PDF. Know. Because I, know, I have a real the crappy so version did, of that up there. Didn't they tell you that you could get a PDF of the thing, but you had to pay $15 for it? Weren't they no. telling you that last night? I don't know. They weren't telling me that. Oh. But I, but that extra copy that came here, I just, you know, I just want newer members or anybody else. Who, like, because I bought my own copy, because I like to do that. But so for anybody else who wants to look at it, I just thought, you know, you having two copies... Anybody could just come to you and say, I'd like to take a look at that. Because, I mean, I do like to do some, some stuff online, but I'm much more concrete. If there's something I really need to work with, I want a copy of it. I want to work through it. I want to look at it. I don't want to have to rely on a, whether my device is charged or not. You know, so I want to highlight it. Want Did Tay buy notes. herself a copy yesterday? I think she was waiting for that one to... <laughs> well, I don't know. She was on the fence. She was waiting for the one that got just that you were getting sent. Yeah, because I told her there's one coming like in for we'll to conservation to be used and shared and spread around. And she said, "Oh, instead of spending fifteen dollars last night, she's like, oh, maybe I'll just borrow that copy and take a look at it." And Did you discuss one. that um, workshop yet? Yes. Oh, um, can you give me the rundown? Because I missed it. I gave my ticket away. <laughs> um, it was it was basically. Um, a summary of this. Oh, okay. That's basically fine. a summary of this. Um, it had um, it was probably the same slides as what was done at the MACC conference about this. Yeah. Um, and then after they kind of talked about how this guidebook is written, they made this super strong recommendation over and over and over again to use the science in your findings to justify your decisions about what to protect in the buffer zone that it's a lot more defensible and that they're starting to see legal decisions and appeals based on those types of orders of conditions. And they're kind of waiting to see how the appeal, how, how legally it's, how well it's going to stand up. Did Nathaniel Stevens talk at all? Yes, yeah, he did a lot. What did he talk about? Or what did, he, what did he bring to it? He, he discussed about the appeal to DEP. Mm -hmm. He discussed about versus the appeal to um, Superior Court. And the different... The Novo... Novo. 
like at DEP, there's like when it's being reviewed by DEP, you can introduce additional findings. Mm -hmm. You can bring up additional information. However, when it goes to Superior Court, I mean, you talked about when it goes to Superior Court, basically all the judge wants to look at is how you made your decision and, and did the conservation make a... Uh, was the process done properly? Was it done properly or and did the commission make a decision that could have been predicted or did they act kind of arbitrarily because they wanted to do this? You know, it was kind of like, so he talked to us. Did he bring up any? Um, did he bring up any examples from his uh, in town? town? That he works, or he's the chair. He might, he he's, might he's have the chair, and he might have. But he didn't he say did. anything in particular. He did talk about yeah. There's yeah, but I can't remember the details. Do you want to? Edges of ponds and all no. I was just wondering. So we. So I'm on Nathaniel's commission. He was yeah. the chair back in the day, but now yeah. he's not. And this someone is in else Arlington, is the chair. Right? Yep. Yeah. In Arlington, and I'm the vice chair. And, uh, and Arlington Conservation Commission. So um, we, uh, you know, the, the regulations are, I mean, if you want tough regulations, you're going to have to go through all this stuff. You just keep a level head and just try to be fair. Everything works out. So a couple of times with new commission members, got on the commission and um, we got appealed a couple of times and the, the town council came to us and said, if they appeal this, you are going to have to change your regulations because what we had written couldn't be supported. And even though it was reviewed a lot and we've had two lawyers on the commission for five years, so and one for a lot longer than that. So it's, it's really hard to, um, you know, and, and when you were telling that story, I was thinking to myself, boy, you know, they're just saying, you know, save and do this, save every inch and, and push for everything you can and make sure that everything's working and, and uh, make sure that you're protecting every little bit you can. That's how you're going to get appealed, you know, that's that, yeah. and that's when they're going to check yeah. out your regulations yeah. and that's when you're going to be up against the wall. And you know, someone else might not agree, but but in in both those situations, in one case, and there's a town that has not only the regular Wetlands Protection Act, but they have their own bylaw. And in that side that bylaw, they have this thing called the aura. And the aura is resource area under the bylaw. So any work within a hundred foot is considered under the bylaw resource area and you have to defend that as an applicant to be in that area. So even when you're 75 feet away or 85 feet away, it's, you know, it's, it's a horrible place to be for some of the commission members. And, and you just really have to remember that, you know, we're 85 feet away here, you know? So yeah, and that's, 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 that's kind of what, you know that's where these the commissions have gone and they've made very tough regulations is it needed i'm not sure I'm sure if you have to have a resource area outside of the resource area yeah some of the some of the examples i think he gave were um worcester has um an ordinance i think that a hundred feet from a catch basin that drains to a wetland is regulated area because um, you don't want to increase the flooding, and there the Black Stone River floods very badly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that was one thing. Another thing was um, some towns have put in their regulations that the buffer zone is itself a resource area. That's what I was just talking That's about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they also took a survey of the towns that were there last night, and there were. Most of the abutting towns to Linfield were represented. Um, and two of the towns that were there don't have any specific regulations for no build and natural vegetated areas the way we have the 25 and the 35. Um, they just sort of 
don't have a regulation for what you can do within that 100-foot buffer, buffer zone. They have to sort of make a ruling every time, and it's based on past precedent. Hmm. So it sounded like we are in better shape than some towns because we have our 25 and our 35. Some towns, the no-build zone is 50 as opposed to 35 feet. So, so I was in Boxford, and it was 75 feet. <clears throat> but they didn't have some sort of you know, resource area, they just called it the no build, which you could always change later on. You could just, so. One of the people who ran the conference, uh, ran the talk yesterday also said over and over and over, uh, make fast friends with um, the planning, you know, <coughs> department too, so that you're, so that you don't, you aren't always arguing with them about their setbacks and your setbacks like try to try to figure out a way to work through some of those issues you know a little bit more coordination between building codes you know and, and what you need to do yeah we haven't run into that here where any of those jurisdictional setbacks that we have and the dimensional setbacks for a building lot have crossed so been lucky but we don't allow uh, pork chop lots and maybe that's the reason so aren't there a couple of pork chop lots right next to Howard Street probably are but we're not allowing them now ah okay and um, it seems to me that place on zero Haverhill Street was they put their houses into the wetland boundary because they couldn't put them closer together because of the setback laws. So we sent them off to say, can you make that a duplex? That's true. And now uh, we got the plans for that tonight <coughs> and it's just one lot and it looks like it's within the 35 and 25. And I, yeah, it's, and again, just knowing where we're at with stuff like this, what I think about is how come no one ever goes to the zoning board and say, how come I can't push this house closer to the road? Right. I mean, they never do it. They haven't done that ever in any town that I've ever been in, you know? Yeah. But it's the Conservation Commission, you know, gives the money back and waives the fees and right. waives the regulations. Right. And so some towns don't. Andover, you're not, you're not going to get a quarter over there. Yeah. So. And one question I asked last night was if somebody builds something that does not actually match the order of conditions, what are our recourses? And they basically talked about um, asking for mitigation, like putting in more plants in exchange for that they built something that took up too much space. So it sounds like sort of what we've been doing. Well, what they talked about as an answer, I don't know if you noticed, it did. It wasn't, um, they basically said you can issue an enforcement order. Yeah. And then it becomes, well, what's the What is the town's motivation for um, enforcing that? You know, what's the willpower with conservation to enforce that? What's the what's town council's um, ability to back you up with penalties and fines versus what's the, the violator's um, willpower to fight it? Right. You know, and so that that's where the real problems arise. You can always an issue an enforcement order, but as we've seen before, sometimes you get cooperation with enforcement orders and sometimes you don't. So, you know, and how far are we willing to go to push that enforcement order? I, I really feel like it's always better to try to create a dialogue. I mean, I agree. It's really hard to go the hard road. I mean, we always make really, a, we always make some progress with yeah. With yeah. dialogue. You have to have just like an open mind. I mean, and that's what we're trying to do with um, mileposts. We're right. trying to, you know. Yeah, and that's just, what we did with Roma Lane. You know, again, we don't know they knew exactly what we were, let, you know, asking them to do. And I just have it in my mind that maybe we had one idea of what was going on. They had a different idea and it all seemed okay. But, you know, here we are trying to close this out and. You know, they're like, wait a minute, we're not really supposed to 
have our kids jump around. I mean, as a guy that had enough kids in my life, I know that parents really want their kids to have, you know, things to play on and places to go in their yard and to be in their yard. So it, it's tough. So I thought these guys really kept it together. And I talked to um, Jesse today and I said that we're going to set up a schedule and get out there. And um, so I know that you want to be on that. So anyways, so let's get on to the next to the cemetery. Okay. So these are pictures I took based on Chuck's email that came out today. Um, the, the rock wall there is a retaining wall and I'm standing up at the top of the retaining wall looking down at the flat land that's basically level with the river and you can see a tree cut off there in the middle and another one and another one. Is that all along the back? Um, as you drive in from Charles Street it's on the left hand side up against the river and then this area the two people who were walking their dog even though it said no dogs allowed told me that um, that dark area there is where they used to have some cement three-sided structures and those three-sided structures have been pulled closer into the cemetery and this dirt area is all kind of like pushed out there in the um, up against the stream so and then that's looking from that same dirt area over towards we're now looking along the back side of the cemetery so, and another tree cut and then this is the far right hand side of the cemetery there's another area they were doing some work along next to the stream so Chuck, could you explain a little bit the process? Because it, it always seems so confusing to me with the town, and when they come before us, and what goes on the, 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 general, permit. the general permit. And Ideally, there's communication that this was going to happen, and they talk to you, and they say, hey, look, this is what we're planning on doing. And we can all just talk about it before it happens and that didn't happen no so when I got into work I was confronted by the building inspector who said <laughs> I guess I guess somehow he knew that I didn't know anything about it he just <laughs> he said have you been down to the Child Street Cemetery because they basically clear-cut it the entire perimeter and he was surprised um, and I think he was surprised as, uh, and everyone knows that hunting is allowed here, as he was surprised because he goes in there to see if deers are walking through or anything like that. Um, and he was, you know, he said, you gotta go down there and check it out, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, so whatever. So I went down there and I looked at it and then I wrote the email and I, but I hadn't been, uh, I hadn't been brought into any conversation that says that this is happening. It's on anyone's schedule. And I actually talked to the tree warden, uh, who's also in charge of the cemetery, either on either on Tuesday or Monday. He was at my desk and we were talking about another, another project. Um, and this didn't come up. So it was I, was, recent. I was pretty surprised that this didn't come up. Yeah, there's granite bounds. At least from the street, you can see granite bounds. So, so that's, I mean, that's this, basically what it looked like. If this was a private property, we would issue and notice the violation. I think this is. Uh, a, a, I think this is a something that needs to be discussed with maybe, yeah. you know, some some part of the Conservation Commission and, and you know, I've talked to Julie Mintz here about it. I've talked to Jane Kinsella about, about this and that's gone on a couple, you know, a year to two. And I've had, I've had, uh, um, you know, a good relationship with Mike, but I, you know, I, I thought it was better than, 
than this, but we weren't told about this, and and I need to have my relationship with Mike better than than that. I think I think what it's worth, and I mentioned this to you, Chuck, is I'm willing to set up a meeting to with Mike and Jane and and you. And it's just if there's anybody else that you think should be involved, like, let's talk about what the process needs to be, um, because this is just like a miss. Does anybody know why they went in and cut those trees? Not at this moment. No. So, so nobody's talked to you so about it. It looks like they're they're overgrowing and it, it would, they would probably claim that it was maintenance and the trees that were cut down were deemed dangerous. That's typically what I hear. But nothing like this has happened before. Okay. And it was the whole perimeter? I'll drive by tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted oh, to I drive by and ways. then try to figure out where this meets on the scale. Because if it's not a problem, then I can manage it myself. I can say, hey, next time we're going to need to know about this. But, you know, if it's not a, hey, next time, and you want to just kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, that slope doesn't look like there's any erosion control going on there and it's mud and the last picture I think that I sent you I think there's one is that the last one this is the last oh, one yeah. all right so I didn't send you the one with the pavement um, you can see big muddy tracks on the pavement of the cemetery driveway so they clearly were driving around in the mud and then drove up onto the asphalt um, and there's no erosion control berms or hay bales or burlap things full of compost or whatever you're supposed to have. So Chuck, I assume you tried to reach out to Mike? I did not. Okay. I assume that's something you're going to pursue tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that Mike, our Mike, is going to make a call to uh, I don't know. Who are you going to call, Mike? You want to call the town manager? You want to call Julie Mincier and, not, um, and talk to him? Talk who's, to her about who's the best? Who's the right person? I think that if you want to set up a meeting, you gotta you gotta talk to Julie first, okay. and you gotta explain to what what's going on. And I can let her know, and um, or I can let her know after you call her, whatever, and then just say this. Um, you have to have a meeting about this. Yeah. I mean, today was a tough day. I had to finish up a couple of orders. We had a lot of stuff going on, but tomorrow, we'll be able to look into this. The work had been done. You know, right. is he is he doing the next cemetery? I'm I'm not sure. You know. Right. Interestingly, the couple walking their dog, the first thing they said when I got out of the car was, are you on the Conservation Commission? <laughs> it's like, I, I said, did somebody send you, you know, did some, are you looking for a Conservation Commission person to come? Has anybody else been here? And they said, no, we just were, you know, so we, they said, we wonder if the less, left hand knows what the right hand is doing. Yeah. They're wondering very well. Yeah, that's what we're wondering. <laughs> so, if, why don't you just give me a call when you have a minute in yeah. the morning, and then uh, we can figure this out. I'm supposed to be, you know, with the coronavirus, everything is going uh, online. So there's a four-hour conference, the Stormwater Conference tomorrow, but I'll be at my desk. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Any other items? I was going to ask Chuck about MPP, but I'll ask after. So, um, I know that there's, so you just wondering, did you get your invitation? You didn't. I did. I got, I have no idea what that all was. I wanted, I, see, I felt like you would want and have time to be on this um, MVP. It's not a committee. It's a fact-finding um, workshop, but it's an eight-hour <laughs> workshop. So During the work day, yeah. I was trying to think of people that weren't working that could come by and be part of it and 
you don't have to be there all day, but they want to know about places in town that flood and um, what you know about the town and, you know, mass municipal vulnerability preparedness. Okay. I didn't even know what MVP stood for. I was thinking most valuable player. Um, okay. Did you think you were the most valuable? <laughs> no, I, I couldn't figure out why I was getting a sports thing in my Yeah, you're area. still municipal. You're still considered a rookie at this point. Ne next year, you're going to get the MVP. Could get rookie of the year. Municipal. Uh, MVP. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. It's hard to say. Prepared. Prepared. Yeah. It's hard to say. And it's been being heading uh, headed up by um, Weston and Sampson, so it will be well worth going there. And I could anybody who wants to go can go. So if I miss someone, you you just need to be invited. It's uh, in <coughs> invitees only. So Dave or anybody else, I I did add some people from the trails committee and um, town forest committee, but. There was another. Yeah, that's kind of where I, I figured. There was um, another um, like climate activity group, like climate awareness group, that's um, that is does hold some meetings out of the Unitarian Church that I heard about. Uh, people who are very engaged with ed public education and yeah. stuff like that. So I don't know if any of those people who live in town might be worth trying to reach as well, but I have to try to find out some names that would be good for that. I know some. She knows some. Yeah. Well, send the names to me and we'll... Can you do that? I'll talk to Andrew, who's um, just like this... He's, he's, some, the, design, he's some... He wrote one. the grant and there's some designee and he's that person and I wrote... It's like... I can't remember. It was construct. He was not the construction supervisor, the supervisor, or something like that. So, he's everything goes through him. So it's Andrew. He's the staff planner. He's done a great job on this. So, um, I know Mike's going to go. Anika may go. be going not for going. a little bit of time, but she might have to leave. And Martha's going. I guess so. <laughs> and, well, it sounds like you thought yeah. it was a good idea. Yeah, it does sound like a good idea. Um, I well, just that's, that's I didn't great. pay attention to the date because I didn't have a clue what it was. March thirty first. Yeah. Okay. Assuming so that COVID nineteen yeah. is. It'll be online. <laughs> if not. That day. <laughs> all right. We just we're ahead of the curve on this MVP, but eventually, are all communities going to be part of that? Or that's not really at this point. We don't know. Well, I guess if, if they're smart, they're going to be part of it. There's a lot of grant opportunities available. So one of the things that we're looking at, um, so I don't know if everyone knows, is kind of a, you know, one of these spots you can't miss. If you've ever gone down Willow Street, when it's rained out, it floods. That's something they're looking at. That's the kind of stuff they want to know about, and we can get grants to help us fix that kind of stuff. That's definitely on the list, and there's other things on the list. I don't know how they're going to be ranked, but they're looking at those areas and other you know vulnerable areas in town and who's vulnerable and you know the seniors and, and things like that and how how to protect them and what, what we can do in advance to do well, that. Is it, <clears throat> is it just Middlesex County or is that being piloted in all the counties in Mass? I don't know. Do you know any? I think that VB process, so it's basically a positioning. Towns can opt into <coughs> this, and um, once they do, and they go through this process to identify the most vulnerable concerns the town has, um, that positions them really well to get further grants to repair the areas they're concerned with. So it's, um, I think there's matching funds, and there's, I mean, I think, talking large amounts of money and some of it could be for stream crossings some of it could be for um, flood control flood control yeah some of it but you know whatever it 
has to be, you know, there's all these different parts of um, climate change and climate resiliency. Like, you know, if we are going to go towards hotter summers, longer summers, um, what's that going to look like in Reading and who's it going to impact the most? Like, are we, is it going to impact, you know, the retired limited income seniors who like spend all their money on their AC? You know, I could see RMLD having all these reduced, these sort of like, um, special blackout days in the summertime where they had a lot last summer, they're going to have a lot more of them. You know, so do we have to do, you know, how are we going to position ourselves to handle the wave of heat that's coming and who it's going to impact? So it's not just conservation. It also has to do with public health. It kind of, it's, it's just getting the town together and getting people to air their concerns and where they think they're most the town's most vulnerable and then getting funds to fix that and get get it set up ahead of time great it's nine o'clock nine o'clock are there any other items there are not are you a motion to adjourn? motion to adjourn second second all those in favor Ooh. great oh. thank you everyone we'll try to make it more important